Join me on a little adventure for a moment, because I'd like to talk about dreams. Not as, like, a psychologist or anything, I'm not about to hold up Rorschachs and ask you what you see in the ink blots and try and tie it to, like, some trauma from when your high school bully put your head in the toilet and flushed it. I want to talk about dream jobs specifically. Because 20 years ago, if you asked a child what their dream job is, you'd probably get some silly things like a professional ice cream tester, getting paid to try different ice cream flavors. But now, if you ask pretty much any kid in the world what their dream job is, all of them will probably give you the same answer. YouTuber. Or more broadly, online content creator. So streamer, YouTuber, things like that. And it's a dream job for more than just children, obviously. There are people of all ages that very much want some kind of online presence as a career. And it's just become a very sought after occupation. There are more people hunting after an online career than there were assassins hunting after John Wick. And the reason I mention this is because there's recently been a rise in the frequency of large content creators expressing burnout, as well as just being completely miserable by the content creation grind, needing to take long breaks, or just outright announcing that they're quitting altogether. In fact, that's what we're talking about today. That's the subject that I want to go over because... Tifu just made a very heartfelt video saying goodbye to his audience, talking about how all the decade plus long grind he's been embarked on has kind of made him feel like his life has slipped away from him. He doesn't regret any of his choices, but he recognized that he spent the majority of his life just behind a computer screen and wants to really finally feel free to live the life that he feels will be the happiest for him. So he made this video which is kind of like the ending credits to like a franchise finale where it just goes over the you know best of moments throughout his life online and he says that he's kind of just hanging up his hat. He's retiring the jersey number. He's stepping away from streaming and making content. If he doesn't know how long he says He'll likely be back at some point, but it won't be for a long time, again, if he ever does come back at all. And this isn't the first big content creator to say something like this, and just within the last week. PewDiePie also recently made an announcement about how he finally feels free from the content grind. Now that he lives in Japan, he's got his baby. Like, there are a lot of examples of this over the last year alone of huge content creators that are just kind of ready to move on from making content online. And I wanted to go over why. Because again, this is a dream job for so, so many people. And this is something I've always said, and I'll once again scream it from the mountaintops here, being a YouTuber or a streamer is the luckiest position you can ever have. And in most cases is legitimately easier than nine to five jobs outside of the internet or other positions that exist outside of the internet. When you are an online creator, for the most part, you get to choose your own hours. It's very flexible on what content you're making or what you really want your online footprint to be. You are in control for the most part, which is a luxury most people, 99% of people in the world, don't get to experience. So how could there even come a time where someone's just like really tired of it or made miserable by it? And I kind of just want to look at that. Because it's not like these creators are geriatric now. It's not like they spent 40 years in the industry and they're just finally ready to just say, you know, kapui, I I'm done here. Like, these are still young people. Tifu's 25 years old. He has been online for over a decade, though. PewDiePie is in his early 30s, and he's been online for over a decade as well. So they have been in the industries for, I mean, pretty much since the infancy of this whole space. But they're not, like, super old. So how does it get to the point where they're just really that done with it at such a young age? That's what I kind of want to explore here. So, in Tifu's video, it's a very honest and open look at what his content creation journey felt like, where he was streaming all the time, making videos all the time, and he felt trapped by it. Now, he does mention something that many people aren't going to sympathize too hard with, and I understand why. He mentions that having to stream six to eight hours a day every day was brutal and, and draining. And a lot of people will recognize that that's kind of just normal nine to five job hours. Like, that's less than 9 to 5 job hours, and most people don't have a job that they love, or a job that's fun, like playing video games, and they're certainly not making millions of dollars playing video games for the 6 to 8 hour period, right? So it's something that a lot of people kind of roll their eyes at, and I do get it. 
because again, it is a dream position. However, it doesn't like n nullify his feelings on it being forced to play basically one or two games or basically just one type of game forever. Otherwise, viewers drop off. Being forced to never really take a break because then you lose so many subs. Like, it is still a draining thing for sure in a different way. You kind of become a prisoner of consistency or else you risk taking a big hit to your income for the month. So it is a mentally damaging thing to feel forced to do shit you don't want to do for a long period of time, which I'm sure a lot of people in the normal working world can also relate to. L let me give you a quick example. I stream daily, and I've streamed daily for the last six or so years. However, two months ago, I had to take four days off. Well, it's not like I had to take it. It wasn't like a fucking government-mandated vacation or anything. I usually will only take, like, maybe one day a month if something came up and it was too late to stream. So, very rarely will you see me not online for four days in a row. That's apocalyptic vacation time for Charles there. That's that shit where the audience got concerned and like, damn... We might need a search and rescue team. <laughs> like, Charles might be in trouble here. This could be a, a message, a deeper message. So, I had four days where I didn't stream in a row because a lot had came up and I just really wasn't able to. And when I did come back, I lost 8,000 subscribers. 8,000 subscribers out of the 20... I think it was 26,000 subs I had at the time just vanished in an instant because I took four days off from streaming and I still haven't gotten them back. It's not like they all just came back once I was online again. Now this isn't some complaint or pity party here because I recognize how unbelievably lucky I am to be in the position that I am. I am one of the luckiest people in the world to be able to do what I do. So this happening wasn't like some kind of shock or something that made me upset or anything like that. This was something I absolutely knew was coming after four days off because I'd seen it happen to so many other large creators. This was one of the main motivators behind Ludwig's subathon, if I remember correctly. He took like a week-long vacation and lost like 10,000 subs and kind of panicked to try, to try and get them back and did the subathon. I remember Tyler1 uh, made a quick, a quick statement on stream after a short time off where he's like, man, I lost 15,000 subscribers. And this is just something that happens. If you're not there every single night, basically, on streaming, since the online audience is always frothing at the mouth for content, they'll find other streamers elsewhere to fill that void because it's such a competitive space. Maybe they come back, maybe they don't. And maybe they do come back, but they don't have a Twitch Prime, right? Like, there's just so many things at play that do ultimately have a big impact on the person's income when they're a streamer. Which is why you very rarely see streamers take a long vacation, or even if they do take a vacation, they still stream during it. Because it's kind of scary not to, because even just taking one day off can result in a drastic decline overnight, basically. So, for Tifu to talk about this, like, I understand the perspective where if he wasn't streaming every single day, and I, he, I know he had a Twitch contract, so he also had minimum, minimum hour guaranteed that he had to hit, which I imagine was probably like 160 or maybe 180 hours would be my guess, uh, but I'm just speculating. If he's not doing that every single day, it's hard to make up those hours, and it's also hard to hold on to his audience and that, subs uh, that subscriber base. So it could absolutely be a really mentally shitty thing to go through. So I understand why that would be frustrating and make him feel like, you know, he can't really set aside time to do other things that he wants to do outside of streaming. And in the video, he said something that I think is a really interesting look at how the perspective shifts once someone reaches that level and is kind of trapped doing the same stuff. He said that in the beginning, gaming was an escape from reality. But now, reality is an escape from gaming for him. Because it's now just become something that he is completely obligated to do and isn't finding enough joy in anymore to make it feel like he's spending his time in a, in a good way that makes him happy. Now, he's in a very fortunate position where he has generational wealth. He has oodles of clams, millions upon millions of dollars that he can use to live his life to the absolute fullest and do the most thrilling shit imaginable if he chooses to off the internet. And I think he recognizes how lucky he is because there's countless people that would love to just leave their 9 to 5 to be able to explore what makes them happiest. And that's fundamentally what Tifu's doing. He's just in a fortunate, lucky position that he is financially secure enough to just step away from his job, his career. And this video is just letting his audience know, like, guys, I really appreciate the support, but it's time to move on to the next chapter of my life. Which I think is a totally respectable thing. 
Now, this is a question I get asked a lot, and especially more recently because of so many YouTubers doing things like Tifu is, making these announcements about very long breaks or all this burnout that they're experiencing or just outright calling it quits. I've been getting asked if there's ever a period that I plan on stopping, you know, making videos or streaming. Because I've been making shit online since 2007, so it's been a, a good 16 years here. I actually started in 2006, but I, I've told all those stories quite a bit. I'm not just gonna uh, give you the lore dump yet again. But, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get a little gray in the face here. So, is there ever a time where I just plan on calling it quits? And my answer is always a resounding no. Me making shit online is what makes me happiest. I have always been doing this shit because I have fun doing it. It's never been like an obligation for me or something I feel forced to do. I've just always done it purely for the love of it. So I couldn't imagine a time where I just hate it and like get made miserable by it and need to step away or something like that. But I always understand people who do. And I think one of the main contributing factors to that that I've discussed a lot is when a, when a creator gets kind of pigeonholed into one type of content and they feel like they can't branch out from it, it leads to them getting really made miserable by it, feeling forced to keep doing one thing forever. No one wants to do the same song and dance a million times. Eventually they want to try other things, but online, taking that step to try other things is extremely scary because it comes with a really real risk of losing a lot of your audience or making things that they won't enjoy or, you know, just driving people away. And that's your entire career. That's your livelihood. You you can't really take chances like that for a lot of creators. So it's always a very difficult thing to do, but I think it's the most rewarding thing as well. Because there's very few people that will be content making the exact same thing that they've been making for a decade. It takes a very strong mental to keep doing the same shit forever without wanting to try other things but again for a lot of creators they feel like they need to and i think that's what really leads to a lot of that burnout and that feeling of needing to take breaks because the endless grind monotony of just doing it all day after day this fucking same stale routine gets to be draining so i really think that a lot of the big contributing factors that make other creators burn out I don't really have myself because I do such an incredibly large variety of content and so much different shit. Like, literally, we just started a wrestling league, our own wrestling promotion, a few months ago that we're going so hog wild with. Like, we're constantly doing new things. I'm constantly trying different types of content, doing all kinds of wild shit. So I just never really experienced that. Now, of course, I can't speak for, like, 40 years in the future here, but I just don't really envision a time where I'm going to stop having fun making things. So right now, I, I don't I don't foresee a future where I just call it quits on creating content or anything like that. But again, with all of these other creators that are talking about this, I really do get it from their perspective on how it gets to that point, even with a job like YouTubing or streaming, a dream job. So yeah, I kind of just wanted to go over this whole topic here. I'm wishing Tfue the absolute best and I hope whatever he decides to do now post content creation is something that makes him extremely happy. He deserves it. Everyone deserves to pursue what makes them happiest. And Tfue is in a lucky position that he gets to do that. So wishing him the best uh, and anyone else that's recently announced breaks or, you know, calling it quits on content creation, I hope whatever they choose to do next is something that makes them feel very happy. So yeah, I uh, just wanted to talk about it. That's about it. See ya.